Hey, what's up, everybody? This is going to be a video about the Benoit two-part documentary that was uploaded to YouTube. And, and then I want to touch on, kind of tie it into the O.J. Simpson uh, Made in America 30 for 30 that aired on ESPN once again. You know, it was kind of funny how they both aired, uh, uploaded and aired in the same week. And, you know, I know there's a lot going on being at WrestleMania, so I'm just going to try to keep this thing... Uh, uh, pretty short, but uh, but yeah, man, the Benoit documentary that Jericho was involved with, uh, pretty fascinating, and uh, you know Jericho, uh, you know it makes it makes him, uh, you know, it just raises his stock. He came off like a class act, and uh, you know I know it's always kind of bothered him that um, you know Ben, you know the WWE tried to erase uh, Chris Benoit's uh, legacy, but at the same time, I, I feel like Jericho's been great, you know, throughout the, the whole Benoit tragedy. I think his podcasts and his opinions have been very therapeutic for, I think, uh, Chris Benoit fans. Um, uh, definitely. But, uh, but at the same time, I feel like he's been very critical about Benoit in a lot of situations as, as well. So, uh, yeah, I mean, the fact that he got David Benoit and, uh, Sandra, uh, Tuffolini to, to finally reconcile after all these years. Um, it, it was a, it was an uplifting part uh, to the documentary. Uh, I, I would definitely say that. Um, but uh, yeah, man, the, I, I thought we really, you know, a lot of stuff we really knew. Uh, but, you know, I think we did learn a lot of stuff. There was some eye opening stuff. Uh, does it make Benoit, does it make us look at Benoit in a more of a positive light or negative light? I, I can't really say. I, I definitely not more of a positive light after what we we heard. But um, yeah, man, it's just it, it, you know th this whole thing, both of these documentaries uh, airing. It, it just really it's it's kind of a slap in the face, and kind of reminds us that we're still a very very young society. Like like the fact that we're just learning all this stuff now about the. Um, you know CTE it's like how come we didn't know about this a long time ago um, but you know it is what it is and uh, if, all right, first I want to start with uh, really quickly just touch on Eddie Guerrero so we all knew that Eddie Eddie's uh, death really um, impacted Benoit a lot you know you could just tell by how emotional he got at the um, at the Eddie Guerrero tribute show that it, you know it was gonna take its toll on Benoit uh, a lot but we didn't know it was gonna get to scary levels um, to the point where he'd be, you know, writing diaries and, 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 and potentially, you know, may, maybe trying to join Eddie in heaven or or possibly being reincarnated. You know, may, maybe the, the deaths of himself and the suicide had to do with him possibly, you know, wanting to leave the earth and, and join him to be reincarnated. So, you know, the whole thing with Benoit uh, taking religious a little bit, taking religion seriously, it was kind of eye-opening because, you know, to my recollection, Benoit was never very religious until after Eddie passed. Uh, Eddie was very religious, though. He was extremely religious. Um, so so I'm sure that maybe, um, you know, may, may, maybe Eddie passed down a lot of his uh, beliefs to Benoit before Eddie passed. Uh, that's something to think about right there. But the, the CTE thing... Um, you know, we, we've known about it uh, for, for quite some time. You know, I, I think a lot of people were relieved uh, to know that this was not roid rage. I, I, I think, you know, there's a, there's a good chance that the roid rage thing would have really hurt professional wrestling more than it did. You, 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 you heard uh, you heard what's his name? Um, uh, I think I think it was Jericho uh, talked about how the, the, the whole business almost. Uh, came down and, and and collapsed because of this and, and may, maybe if if it was revealed that steroids did play a huge part in this maybe that that definitely would have been the case but uh the whole cte thing you know we, uh the flying headbutt you know we, we've known for years that benoit used the flying headbutt uh the german suplexes uh taking unprotected chair shots the torpedo ch chair shot from jericho like stuff like that um you know, really, um, you know, it, it's, it's just, it, it's just kind of like, it, it just kind of hit, it hits you when you watch this thing. Like, man, like in the nineties, in the attitude era, how, how did, how did we not know that these, this is not good for you, that this is not good for the brain. Um, but, uh, you know, the Chris Nowinski thing, let, let me touch on that. All right. So we've all heard Chris Nowinski 
for years now, over a decade, uh, talk about the the Benoit situation. You, you, you've heard Chris tell the story time and time again how, you know, Benoit was interested in the concussions. He, he actually told Chris, you know, I've had more concussions than I can remember. Um, and and he said, well, get back to me. And 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 when and when Chris Nowinski did reach out to Benoit. Benoit was kind of uninterested and, and said, you know, he had more important things going on. And, and so so that that's the one thing you learn here. You you just kind of wish that Benoit had taken Nowinski's research about this. You're a very, very smart guy. You know, he went to Harvard. Uh, obviously, he's, um, you know, very well educated. And, you know, you, you remember all the bad luck that he had during his short stint in the WWE. So you, you just wish that Benoit had, had taken this situation a little bit more uh, uh, seriously as well. So, um, yeah, I mean, the whole thing with Eddie passing, they really illustrated, you know, that, you know, Benoit took this a lot harder than I think anyone uh, could have ever imagined. And Jericho even illustrated how, uh, you know, he did not take it very well at the funeral either. So that's uh, that's another thing to uh, to think about there. But yeah, the, the whole thing with religion uh, came off very scary. Uh, we also learned a lot about the steroids and the wellness policy after Eddie Guerrero passed. And, and I remember because Eddie died at heart failure, they implemented this uh, this wellness policy. And um, they they even I don't, I don't remember how this came about, but they uh, on some of the wrestling scoop sites, they uploaded audio of Vince actually meeting with the wrestlers and angle was asking like question after question and you know when you think about it now i mean this this is a direct reason why angle probably ended up leaving the wwe the, this wellness policy uh, however though they talked about the there's a lot of arguments that nancy benoit and and, and chris benoit had about the uh, wellness policy, you know, Nancy was saying that it was, uh, you know, it, that it, it wasn't legit, how, you know, it was easy to get around the testing. And and when you look back on it, it really was. If you look at Benoit's body in 2006 and 2007, he still looked, it didn't really change in terms of his uh, muscular stature. It wasn't like he lost a lot of weight. It wasn't like he turned into CM Punk. So, uh, so yeah, the, uh, it was obvious that Benoit was still finding ways around the uh, the wellness policy. And, and I, I, I guess it got to the point after the Benoit tragedy, like the WWE had no other choice but to um, but to make this testing more strict. And, and it makes sense because I, I remember like as soon as everybody got back to school for the 2007, 2008 school year, like in September, they were suspending guys left and right. I mean, I can't remember everyone. I, I think Mysterio. um Mysterio, John Morrison, Mr. Kennedy, the guys just got suspended like crazy. Um, so it so so it makes sense that the testing got even more strict after the uh, Benoit situation. But yeah, the, the the fact that the you know the the, the testing was kind of you know I, I I guess it was more of a PR stint at first that uh, that that wasn't a good sign there. So uh, I mean, like I said, guys, I think that had a lot of, a lot of reason to do with Angle going to TNA. And I I do remember, and I've stated this before, I do remember there was a huge story that came out about how an anonymous WWE wrestler wished he had signed with TNA and didn't re-sign with the WWE. And I think we all know who that is after watching, um, after, you know, all the facts that are laid out here. So, so yeah, man, the, the Benoit uh, documentary, really cool. Uh, David Benoit, I just want to finish by talking about him uh, specifically. Um, you know, I, I, I kind of, I really feel bad for him. I, I really do. Um you know, imagine like the pain and, and everything that he went through at the time, uh, you know, and, you know, it's it's just, you know, it's, to me, like, it's just sad. It, you know, I, I don't think anyone, you know, went out of their way to make the guy feel bad or anything. But, you know, I, I don't I, I don't I don't know if anyone's had to, you know, endure, you know, what he's what he's went through. I mean, to, you know. <laughs> It's just uh, that had to be really tough, but uh, it's to me and, and and you know he's he doesn't seem like he seems like a really really cool guy and and there was even a part of the documentary where that they, they showed that Chavo actually had to hug him, so I I think this is very therapeutic for him and um, and uh, obviously it was it was hard to to learn that you know he wasn't on speaking terms with uh, you know Sandra and all those people and. And it, it's the same. No, no one should be blamed for the choices of a father. They have that old saying that 
the 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 sins of the father come back to haunt uh the son but i'm i'm not a big fan of that and 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 i'm and you know there's no son should feel uh any any pressure or any uh any guilt because of, of what a father did it's like it's it's like my mother or, or my mother's family uh not talking to me or abandoning me or you know wishing i was dead because you know my father cheated on my mother it's like i had nothing to do with that and it's the same thing with david benoit this kid had nothing to do with what happened but um yeah he seems like a really cool guy you know if we ever decided to wrestle you know, how cool would that be for him to, um, you know, become a wrestler and really, you know, carry on the good side of his father's tradition in some form or fashion if that ever does happen. But I know that's a t touchy subject. It's a subject for another day. So, so yeah, let, let me just um, awkwardly jump into the O.J. Simpson uh uh, documentary, uh, the 30 for 30, th th this was, this was incredibly, uh, well done. I think this is going to set the standard for, uh, a lot of the sports documentaries that have, uh, taken place. I thought it was, uh, uh awesome. Yeah. You know, when, when I was growing up, uh, I, I got tired of the OJ Simpson case, you know, cause I didn't really know OJ. I knew him from the, uh, the, the naked gun movies, the Hertz commercials, but I didn't, I didn't see him play. So I, I had, there was a lack of connection with, with OJ. I, I remember, um, uh, I went out with this girl and, um, you know, the first day we were, I was in her room and we were watching, you know, something about the OJ thing. And, and she, um, and she asked me, do you think he did it? And I was just like, so tired of it. I was like, you know, man, I, I, I really, I just really don't care. And that's the word that's so you should, that's like the number one thing you, to say to a girl and after then that was kind of the end of us you know uh but uh but that just goes to show you how you know how it dominated people's lives this friggin uh oj case but when i look back on it man it was um it was just a, a really really interesting case and it, it really it, it was really more about race you know um it, it was really a, a really more so about the um you know, the L.A. riots really playing a big uh, role in the outcome of this match and the whole thing with, you know, it, it really it really just turned into, you know, a, a case on Mark Furman, the racist cop. You know, it, it really was more about Furman being a racist uh, when you look back at some at, at, at the final verdict of it. But um, but, you know, they in the documentary, though, then this is how I'm going to tie it in with the uh, uh, Chris Benoit stuff. Like they, they really didn't touch on the CTE thing at all. So that's probably, you know, that's the one main flaw with the documentary. The documentary is actually a little old, though. I think it's 2016. Um, and, you know, I don't think you can test for CTE until after the guy is dead. Um, so that's another reason there. I, I know I know the guy that was involved with concussion, um, the real actor and uh, the, the real guy from concussion, the guy that wrote the book. Uh, thought OJ should actually get tested for CTE, and I think he should. And and this is what we know about OJ Simpson. You know, he was a running back uh, at USC with the Buffalo Bills. Uh, and when you watch a lot of that footage back of OJ, he looks like such a nice, like innocent guy. Like he's he's like he's like putting over his teammates. He he, he just he just he just looks like he looks like a good guy. Um, and then over time. Like they, they did an interview after one of the first domestic violence uh, incidents that happened in 19, I think it was like after 1989, I think it was an ESPN documentary. They did a close up of OJ during the documentary and he just it didn't look good. Like, like I, I, I'm, in my opinion, it, it just seems to me like the brain damage, the CTE, the trauma to the head, like over time, it just makes you like, it just makes you evil. Uh, and then, and then you, and then you combine that with maybe painkillers and drugs. Um, I think the combination of that, you know, it, it just. And I would say that OJ, because of fame and uh, because of you know the spotlight, the privilege that he had, you know, being the you know one of the first black guys to really be treated, be put on a pedestal like that, it gave him such an ego that when he started aging and started like deteriorating in fame with fame. I think he got nat I think he was naturally a jealous guy. So to me like I I feel like the combination of the CTE and the jealousy it, it was it was just a really bad uh combination when you look back on it. And like I said guys, he was a running back uh, running backs we talk about it all the time how they don't have a very long lifespan. 
you know they they can't play for that long it's it's a very grueling position um you're you're constantly you know you know, running into the defense, going helmet to helmet. And he also you got to keep in mind, OJ was a running back that couldn't catch. They talked about how the, the you know, the first coach, he was having OJ, you know, uh, catch the ball and, and he wasn't able to catch it. Uh, but, you know, OJ's the type of running back where he needed to get the ball to the line of scrimmage. So he, you're, he's con- constantly running in the double teams, constantly running into the defense. So that couldn't have helped either, man. So, uh, so, 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 so definitely, man, I, I think CTE – had a huge part to do with um, uh, the OJ thing, but for some reason they don't really talk about it that much. But uh, yeah, the OJ documentary was was great though, man. And um, like I said, it, it ended up being more about race. And it's funny, you know, it, it, it you, you kind of feel bad for the people that lost their lives because it, it really became, you know, it really became all about Furman at the end. You know, you know, the, the, those those tapes where Furman was acting like a racist really came back to bite, you know. Uh, bite him in the ass. Um, you know, there's a lot of things you could get into that was interesting about the whole glove thing, but I'm not going to go too much into depth there. But, you know, the uh, the whole Rodney King thing, the L.A. riots, you know, it was just one of those things where, you know, the the tide had to finally turn. And I, I do, when I look back on it, I think it was uplifting to see that, you know, finally... Um, you know, up, up, you know, the, 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 to see OJ actually, you know, for, for black people, I think it was uplifting to see OJ get off. And you, you guys remember how polarizing it was when OJ um, was acquitted. And, um, you know, it's just one of those things. But, uh, you know, this is a very uh, touchy subject talking about both of these guys, the, the whole the whole thing with CT. But, hey, the moral to the story is like, at least, at least we we're we're we're, now, we're very knowledgeable about how how dangerous this could be, you know, unprotected chair shots, you know, trauma to the head, you know, um, you know, maybe back in the seventies the helmets weren't that good, um, helmet to helmet collisions, all that stuff, you know, there's no way to prevent getting injured, but uh, uh, at least at least now we're a little bit more knowledgeable about you know the the dangers of um, you know potential brain trauma. And uh, so, yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video, and I'm out. All right.